Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. There is a uh, 2006 film, it's a really good film, I recommend it. It's called The Wind That Shakes the Barley. And it is, uh, I don't know who's directed it, but it stars Killian Murphy, you know, from um, Scarecrow, from the Christopher Nolan films. Uh, it's a great movie. It's about the Irish War of De Independence. And it's set in the 1920s, I think. And it, it stars Killian Murphy and this other character who plays his brother. And these are two brothers fighting in the IRA. And this is in the southmost part of Ireland. So we're not talking about Ulster, Northern Ireland, that, you know, eventually kind of came to a uneasy you know, um, agreement under Britain. No, this is Ireland, the, the uh, you know, proper Ireland today that, that eventually gained its independence from Britain. So it was fighting for its independence from Britain. Britain were the conquerors. Britain were the oppressors. And the movie's a great uh, film. It does a good job of presenting uh, the brutality of such a war and whatnot. And I'm no expert on uh, Irish history, but I do remember basically what's going on in the film. And in the film, Killian Murphy joins up with the IRA with his brother, and they're fighting for independence. They see the brutality. They see this man uh, put to death because he refuses to say his name in English. They see all of these horrors that the British are enacting upon the Irish people. So they fight. They're, we're going to fight for our independence. This is not right. You know, you came in here and conquered this land from us. It's ours. We're going to fight for it. And that's part of the movie. Then at one point, and this is, you know, historical, Britain made kind of an uneasy truce with the IRA or parts of the IRA, which was basically, well, we'll still, and, and again, I'm not an expert in Irish history. I'm just giving you a short shrift here. But it was basically, we'll still own you. You'll still be ours. You're still Britain's. But we'll kind of let you govern yourself, sort of, you know, and uh, and you can, you know, wear your wear the British uniforms, and, and you know, you can kind of be there and whatnot. Now, Killian Murphy's character, his brother, eats this up, says, "Yes, this is it. This is the way." So suddenly, his brother, who's been fighting with him in the IRA, is wearing the British uniform, is there, and and uh, you know, um, going after these Irish rebels who are dissenting, because his argument is that look. It's, it's, it's unrealistic that we're ever going to really kick the great British empire out of our country. That's just unrealistic. So what we need to do is we need to work with them. We need to work with them and maybe kind of change things from the inside, you know, and, and take as much stake, as much freedom as we can here. Is that argument sounding familiar to anybody in terms of fandoms and whatnot? This is the Star Wars argument. Now, I know, and I'm not trying at all to, to diminish the horrors of war. Our, our diminished Irish history by comparing it to Star Wars fandom right now. But at the same time, you, you, you know, this fair game for pointing out common things here. Disney came in and took Star Wars away. Now, yes, they legally bought it and, you know, legally it's theirs and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of from the culture, Star Wars always meant a certain thing in our culture. <clears throat> it was uh, free from agendas it was its own wonderful thing that had a, 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 a function in our culture a, as mythology and disney came in and conquered that and took that over and changed it and and, and began to bastardize it and 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 made you know all of the horrors that the prequel or the sequel trilogy is you know horrible horrible and fans everywhere rose up against it. The fandom menace, right? No, we're going to fight this. We're going to boycott. We're going to get the word out. We're going to keep calling out the problems. Then Disney stepped in and said, well, what if, you know, what if we get John Favreau in here and give you a, you know, a man, hey, we'll get Dave Filoni to work on it. You guys remember him, right? You liked him in the Clone Wars. We'll get him to work on a Mandalorian series for you. And, and oh, you know, and, and maybe even he'll have some spinoffs and, and, that's where we are now. And you have a large portion of the good old fandom menace who have completely stopped, ceased their hostilities at this point in terms of actually affecting any change. <clears throat> and now the arguments that they give you, guys, come on, it's unrealistic. It's unrealistic that we're going to make Disney completely retcon the, the sequel trilogy. So the answer is we got to work with them. You know, we got to work and try and, you know, support our guys from the inside who are working to change. And it's a civil war and all this stuff, you know, and we're, we're laying down our arms. So we can work with them. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And I've pointed out this, this out so many times. 
the people who are trying to say that, hey, this is the way we work with them, you know, they are they are the the, the former IRAs happily wearing their little British uniforms now saying we're going to affect some change. No, you're just a little pathetic gimp for the enemy. <laughs> That's what you are. And, and, and spouting this nonsense about, yeah, we're going to, you know, change from the inside. You just have to go slower and, you know, and, and, um, well, hey, yo, we got the Mandalorian series. Yeah, you got the Mandalorian series. That leads to the new order. We got Grogu and we got Luke coming back and get Grogu. And yeah, yeah, who dies when Kylo Ren? Because this is all part of that continuity. Stop fooling yourself. Straight out, completely naively fooling yourself if you think it's not. Oh, they're trying to get through a retcon. No, they're never going to. Why would they do a retcon? They've got your money now. What, what do you have? What leverage do you have that would force them to do a retcon? You're already giving them your allegiance, your money. You can say mean things about Kathleen Kennedy if you want. What's that changing? Nothing. She's still got all the power. Don't listen to my sources. Oh, behind the scenes, my sources. W wake up. Open your eyes and look at things around you. Your wide open blanket acceptance of the Mandalorian. Oh, we got the squeeze and the excitement for, for Book of Fett, you know, and all these kinds of things. It's just paving the way for Disney to continue business as planned, business as usual. You're you you you're no threat to them whatsoever anymore. You've given away every bit of leverage you had. The the fear that they had when people stayed home from Solo, that's gone now. That's gone now. They laugh at your paltry little. You got to get Kathleen Kennedy out of there. What power do you have? Why would they listen to you? They've thrown you your bones and you're very happy chewing on those bones. You're a happy little trooper in your Disney uniform talking about affecting change from the inside. You're never going to get it. I hope you're really, really extremely happy, happy enough to never have anything better from your little Disney Plus series of The Mandalorian or Book of Fett or whatever, because that's all you'll ever get from good, decent Star Wars. And in the meanwhile, they'll continue with the High Republic and all of their other stuff that they're doing that's linked to the prequel or the sequel trilogy. That's all. There you go. It's to the point now where I've said this before. I am. Why would you be even remotely interested? People ask me like, why well, have you seen the Wheel of Time trailer? What do you think about the new The Batman trailer? It's to the point now where I don't even need to see trailers anymore. I know if something is released now from these beloved franchises, I don't want any part of it. I don't want to see it. I don't want it's it's being created in the this current woke culture that Hollywood is in today, which is 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 not going anywhere. It's fueled by ideology, not by profits. This well, it's a business, and we'll, if we just speak, treat it like a business, and no, the supply and demand means nothing to these people. They want to indoctrinate you. That is their goal. They can they can be flat broke. They will still be driven by their agenda, by their need to preach. That is what they'll do, and and they'll they'll they've come up with all kinds of underhanded and manipulative ways to do this. And the fact that people, the the overwhelming majority of people, have so eagerly rolled right over and shown them their throats and belly just for a season of Mandalorian or a Book of Fett series or whatever. That ensures that they will never go anywhere. They will never. They have no reason to. They're, what are you? What threat are you to them? You're none. You're nothing to them. So it's to the point where I wouldn't even watch anything that comes out these days. And that might lead some people to say, oh, you're just a grumpy old man then. Oh, I'm not watching new stuff because it's not as good as the old stuff or whatever. First of all, that's a straw man. That's a straw man. And, uh, you know, if there's reasons for this, and if there's logical reasons presented to you why the new stuff can't be any good and that's what you fall back on then you're you're strong manning with the best of the sjw so congratulations